All right, so dibol is a special reagent. Now, it's a little different. It's a reducing agent. But it's a little different than the other ones you saw before. You saw lithium aluminum hydride before and sodium borohydride. Those had charges inherent with them, right? So NaBH4 was this, right? It already was like a hydride source, right? It already had a negative charge there. It had H minuses. Dibol doesn't have that. Dibol essentially has to be activated by the substrate that it's going to react with. So specifically an ester here, right? an ester here, if we draw the ester's resonance structure, now we draw resonance structures for lots of reasons. One of the best reasons we draw resonance structures is to understand, to help us understand where molecules will react which atoms are electron rich, which, which atoms are electron deficient. So when we draw this resonance structure of this ester, it gives us a clue saying, well, you know, this oxygen right here is actually pretty electron rich. And this is the form that's going to actually react with the dibol, right? So let's get, let's say goodbye, goodbye sodium borohydride. Right. So we draw the resonance form to help understand how this will react. I think it's just easier to see this way. So once we have that resonance form, we react there. Right now, why do we react there? The aluminum is electron deficient, partly because it's aluminum, right? It's a metal. That oxygen is electron rich. So we bring those two things together. So what is that what is that going to end up looking like? So there we've drawn, I've drawn all that bond being formed between the oxygen and the aluminum. But I'm missing something here. What am I missing? I need to also have, I need to balance my charge. Always balance your charge. So where should there be a negative charge? Who got electrons? The aluminum did. All right. So the aluminum has a formal minus charge. But we know, right? just like looking at sodium borohydride, just because something has a negative charge or a positive charge doesn't mean that's the thing that's actually electron rich or electron deficient. Right? So we look at aluminum and we're like, wait, aluminum is a metal. So aluminum... This H is actually the place that's electron rich. So this is like a hydride. And notice what we've done here. One, two, three, like right. We've made a, we've brought these things really close together. We made them, we made them so they're right next to each other. So we've activated this hydride source, this dibol, right? And now we have an H minus source, and we have our substrate right next to it, right? So things being in proximity helps. Because right, esters are not that reactive, right? We talked about esters not being that reactive because of resonance. But if you can get things right next to each other, it makes things happen a lot. It takes less energy if things are really close together. So what happens? The hydride reacts. Electrons go up. That's that addition. Something like this. Do any about do I have any charges I need to worry about? No. Right? No, no charges to worry about. And then the last step is kind of this breaking down. Right? Of course, we added an H here. And that gives us what? That gives us an aldehyde. There's that new H we added. We have O minus. And where should there be a plus charge? On the aluminum. And these two things can come together, but you can leave it like that. We only add one H. Right? We only add one H because it's only the amount of hydrogens we have on the diabol. Things won't, diabol won't react with the aldehyde because it doesn't have, the aldehyde doesn't have these resonance forms. So it's not going to react with that. So dibol, this is very diisobutyl aluminum hydride, is very selective for esters, turning esters into aldehydes. Very selective for turning esters into aldehydes.